Okay, so if you do the calculations, you will see that, well, length of B is square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, that's 13, so square root of 13. And length of A is square root of length B squared plus 1 squared, if you want, which is going to be square root of 13 plus 1 is square root of 14. Hence, answer number 2, which almost all of you gave. Okay, so the general formula, you know, if you follow what we did, in general, if we have a vector with components a1, a2, a3, then the length of a is the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. Okay, any questions about that? Uh, yes? Does this pattern continue for values above a3? Yes, so in general we indeed can consider vectors in abstract spaces that have any number of coordinates and then you have more components. Uh, in this class we'll mostly see vectors with two or three components only because they are easier to draw and because a lot of the math that we'll see works exactly the same way whether you have three variables or a million variables. If we had a vector with more components then we would have a lot of trouble drawing it but we could still define its length in the same way by summing the squares of the components. So um, I'm sorry to say that here, you know, multivariable, multi will mean mostly two or three. But be assured that it works just the same way if you have 10,000 variables. Just calculations are longer. Okay. Um, more questions? No? Okay. So what else can we do with vectors? Well, another thing that I'm sure you know how to do with vectors is to add them or to scale them. So vector addition. So if you have two vectors, A and B, then you can form them some, there's some A plus B. How do we do that? Well, first, I should tell you, vectors, you know, they have this double life. They are, at the same time, geometric objects that we can draw like this on pictures. And they are also computational objects that we can represent by numbers. So every question about vectors will have two answers, one geometric and one numerical. Okay, so let's start with a geometry. So let's say that I have two vectors, A and B, given to me. And let's say that I thought of drawing them at the same place to start with. Well, to take the sum, what I should do is actually move B so that it starts at the end of A, at the head of A. Okay, so this is again vector B. So observe, this actually forms now a parallelogram, right? So this side is again vector A. And now, if we take the diagonal of that parallelogram, this is what we call a plus B. Okay, so the idea being that to move along A plus B, it's the same as to move first along A and then along B. Or along B, then along A. A plus B equals B plus A. Okay, now if we do it numerically, then all you do is you just add the first component of A with the first component of B the second with the second, and the third with the third. Okay. Say that A was A1, A2, A3, B was B1, B2, B3, then you just add this way. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. So, for example, you know, I said that my vector over there, its components are 3, 2, 1, but I also wrote it as 3 times i plus 2 times j plus k. What does that mean? Oh, so I need to tell you first about multiplying by a scalar. So, so maybe I should say this is about addition. So multiplication by a scalar, it's very easy. 
if you have a vector a, then you can form a vector 2a just by making it go twice as far in the same direction. Okay? Or we can make half a more modestly. Or we can even make minus a, and so on. Okay? So now you see if I do the calculation 3 times i plus 2 times j plus k, well, what does it mean? 3 times i is just going to go along the x-axis, but by distance of 3 instead of 1. And then 2 times j goes 2 units along the y-axis, and k goes up by 1 unit. Well, if you add these together, you will go from the origin, then along the x-axis, then parallel to the y-axis, and then up. And you will end up, indeed, at the end point of the vector a. OK. Any questions at this point? Yes? So for the, uh, for the geometric vector addition, uh, you're basically just using the tip to tail addition? Exactly. To add vectors geometrically, you just put the head of the first vector and the tail of the second vector in the same place, and then it's head to tail addition. Any other questions? Yes? Um, so when you're you just put one in that That's correct. If you subtract two vectors, that just means you add the opposite of a vector. So, for example, if I wanted to do A minus B, I would first go along A and then along minus B, which would take me somewhere over there. Okay? So, A minus B, if you want, would go from here to here. <laughs> okay. So... Well, hopefully you've kind of seen that stuff either you know, before in your lives or at least yesterday. So I'm going to use that as an excuse to move quickly forward. But, uh, so now we're going to learn a few more operations about vectors. And these operations will be useful to us when we start trying to do a bit of geometry. So, of course, you've all done some geometry, but we're going to see that geometry can be done using vectors. And actually, in many ways, it's the right language for that. And in particular, when we learn about functions, we really will want to use vectors more than maybe you know, the other kind of geometry that you've seen before. <coughs> 